Hi, I'm Amy Bodkin, Special Needs Consultant at a Charlotte Mason Plenary. As a school psychologist, autistic adult, and special needs mom, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, how do you stay organized when you have challenges with executive functioning? So today, I am inviting you into my home so that I can show you some of the ways that I have organized our space based on four main variables. What stuff you have, what space you have, location, and personality. Hi, welcome to our home. So this is our foyer, and this is probably the most important space to be able to have organized if you have executive functioning issues. Um, because this is where all of the stuff enters and leaves our home. So as soon as things come in, we try to drop them where they are. Otherwise, they migrate to all sorts of areas of the house, and then we can't find them anymore. <laughs> Um, so one thing we do is we drop the shoes by the door because we've got at least one kiddo who cannot find his shoes to save his life. And then um, hanging keys, purses, jackets, sunglasses, whatever we have goes up here on this nifty contraption. And then over here we have a bench. That I'd love to put stuff in the bench, but right now it's become my kid's uh, toy weapons locker. so. That's not going to happen, but um, there's a bag for my son's karate stuff. My daughter's ukulele is right here. These are our school bags, and we take the school bags with us almost everywhere we go because um, that way, if they've got a few minutes in the car, they can get some schoolwork done without having to waste time when we're at home. So they're color coded, if you'll notice. One is red and one is blue. My daughter is red, my son is blue. My daughter's always red and my son is always blue. I color code my kids. <laughs> and yes, blue for the boy and red for the girl. Um, it makes sense in my brain, so that's why I do it. Um, my husband has a blue toothbrush and I, no, no. He has the red toothbrush and I have the blue one and I've been very confused ever since and I keep accidentally using his. So find a color scheme that works and stick with it. When I was in college, I um, color coded all of my classes. So some classes, like everything that was needed for that class might be purple and everything needed for another class might be blue. The book would be covered blue, the spiral would be blue, the folder would be blue, everything would be the same color. Um, and then everything in John's bag is blue and everything in my daughter's is red. So he has a blue tablet case, a blue goalie. Um, one of the things that we also do to address executive functioning issues uh, with these is, so his tablet oops, has two ways to sign in, his little screen name and school. This is the school one that it's on right now. So when we sign into this one, he can only do the school apps or apps that we have allowed him to have access to, which really helps me when I forget. The goalie is a really cool um, little invention. It's like a phone and it has little routines you can schedule in. Maybe if it works. Oh, there we go. All right, so he has some routines. We'll say he's doing chores right now. So it will come up. And a little bit glitchy. Oh, apparently there were no reward or chores left to do. So, but it will give you time limits to get things done. And um, it will also do sound and visual reminders which can be really helpful if you have executive functioning issues. We have also done checklists and stuff for chores, schoolwork, those kinds of things. Um, so it just kind of depends on what's going on as to what's the best fit. I like the goalie a lot, but um, regular paper and pencil also work sometimes. Um, we also have another set of bags over here. This set, again, a blue one and a red one. And these are their music bags for when they have music lessons. Um, I outsource those. 
Now we're gonna go see the rest of the house in a minute, um, but let me first show you another thing about executive functioning right when you come in the door, whatever door you come in. So we have a metal door that is magnetic, so I keep a magnet on the door and we can attach papers that need to leave the house on that magnet. You could also do it with sticky notes or tape, whiteboard, corkboard, whatever. Um, now I mentioned that there's four basic um, things that we have to consider when we're organizing. One of those is what we have, uh, so the stuff we have, the space we have, but also your location. We live in Florida, so this is supposed to be a coat closet. We do not use it as a coat closet because we very rarely have winter weather. Um, so instead it's become a toy closet. I'm going to go more into how we do closets um, to keep ourselves kind of functioning better. Um, but a few things to point out here. Um, you'll notice a lot of these are all classic toys, puzzles, play food, board games, uh, Legos, little dollhouse, Playmobil, things like that. Things that um, the kids have continued to enjoy um, as they've gotten older. They are grouped by what they are. Um, another thing, and I don't know if you can actually see that in here, but in all of the boxes for games and puzzles, I have taken them out of their boxes and put them into Ziploc bags and written on the outside what it is. And sometimes I will put a picture of the puzzle inside that bag or the instructions to the game, but it really condenses down the size because if we kept all the boxes that these games were in, the entire closet would be game boxes at least. Uh, we have DVDs over here. A lot of these are my husband's. Um, I did something different with the kids' DVDs that I'll show you in a little bit. Um, but that's pretty much what we used our coat closet for. Um, being in Florida, that does have an impact on how we do storage. We do not use our attic for storing much of anything because of the heat. We don't store much of anything outside because of the heat. We do not have a basement because we live in a flood zone. Um, so there's very little um, storage space outside of just within the house, um, just because the heat, it gets so hot. Then another feature of um, Florida homes tends to be that we tend to have a large great room that's our living area. And so that's also the setup of our house. So we're gonna go move through that room uh, I will let you know, I did go ahead and tidy up before we did this video today because I wanted y'all to be able to see and find the organization that we use because I find when there's too much clutter around, it's hard for me to focus. Uh, we are going to pop by and say hi to the kids and they are in the room that I did not tidy today. So you can see that I actually tidied and that's not how we usually live. So this is kind of our office. Hello. Oh, say hi. Hi. All right. Hello. Not the clean room. This is the great room. This is where our living space is. So this is also where uh, the bulk of our schooling happens. So you can come on in this way. A lot of our schooling happens at the table. Not always, but a lot of it does specifically right now because we're not going anywhere else. So I have our school supplies tucked in cubby holes all over this area. Um, my daughter took over these top two drawers for her art supplies, which are also up here too. She does art all the time. Um, this houses some math, handwriting type supplies. This one houses uh, visualizing and verbalizing for hyperlexic kids. This one houses dyslexia materials. Uh, there's a box under here that houses holiday items um, for different types of um, holiday learning things. Over here, um, we have our globe there. And actually, there's a hidden door over here. And it ha houses two of our microscopes because we're a total nerd family. So we have more than one. Uh, then over here, we have a box that we keep books we're currently reading, which is ridiculous 
right now. Uh, this one holds games and foreign language type items. This one holds crafts. And then down here, we've got these little plastic document boxes and they hold the kids um, art well drawing projects because it holds papers. This little box here, um, it was a toy chest. I stuck it under here and it holds the rest of our foreign language materials. We've got a microscope over there and then over here we have our book of centuries, our nature journal, science experiments, things like that. Um, one thing that I do find is that when you homeschool and you do handicrafts, a lot of times the handicrafts end up on the wall. Um, over there we have the Roman shield um, that my husband made and it's pretty much almost authentic. So um, we've got art for school and there's the constellations we're studying. So, you know, a lot of times we don't always have to store those kinds of things because they can end up on the wall. So coming back through here, through the kitchen, um, I used to keep a calendar that was dry erase up on the wall, uh, on the fridge. And this is where I would do my monthly meal planning. Haven't done that in a while, but um, that worked for me previously and I think we're about to return to that. The current checklist the kids are using are on the front of the fridge. You do want to come and see the pantry. Um, so we do a lot, we have a lot of special diets around here. And so storing bulk items was a bit of a problem. So I started using glass sealed canisters to keep those bulk items in. Um, one of the things that has worked out really well for that is that anytime that we purchase something that has pantry moths or something in it, uh, it doesn't in contaminate everything else in the pantry. So that's a real plus. Uh, once again, it depends on where you live because we have to store water down here um, as part of our hurricane supplies. So um, your organization very much depends on your family um, and what you have describes who you are and it also depends on your space and just what's going on in your area we're going to come through here to the laundry room for a minute this is another extension on some of the crafts uh, we keep some of the sewing supplies in here but um, this is where current art projects go because you need a space to put some of your current art projects. I've also put some of the projects my daughter's worked on on trays, and that has helped some. Um, but we need a lot of space for ongoing crafts. Uh, one other thing I'd like to mention is that for executive functioning, I mentioned the lists that we keep for the kids, but I also keep lists. This is my Google Calendar, and it is completely color-coded. It has 30-minute um, reminders that remind me of uh, something that's happening before it happens. Um, so that's something I use a lot. I also make use of my notes for all sorts of things. I'll have a grocery list going, uh, notes for a video I'm doing, what I need to do for work shopping lists, uh, all kinds of things. Um, so I tend to outsource my executive functioning to this. And it is fantastic. They didn't used to have these when I was a kid and it's definitely helped me a lot. Uh, some people really like their paper planners, but you just gotta find what works for you. All right, um, another thing about Florida homes is that we almost always have a master bedroom and a master bathroom. So we are going to take a quick break and head in there next. Okay, so this is our master bedroom. Um, the main thing I want you to pay attention to in here is that we've got this laundry basket right here. This is the junk laundry basket. When I am tidying up the house, when I'm trying to, you know, put things away or whatever, I'll come across things where I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. It goes in here until I have time to go through it and decide what we're going to do with it. Everybody should have a space. Um, and then this is my paperwork pile. It's too big. Um, 
And that's really honestly all that's really important in here. Uh, we do have under the bed storage and I really find that people don't take enough advantage of this space. So uh, we got a tall frame here so that we could put more under there. It houses mostly our clothes, shoes, because we don't have a dresser in here. And we really don't use our closet space as much for clothing. Um, and then a few other storage items. So coming in here to the master bathroom, we have um, some of the same kind of storage you've seen before where you've got the boxes that are labeled. I find labels help because that way everyone um, knows where things go. So that's helpful. Um, this is hygiene stuff, some of my husband's clothes, more clothes in boxes. But um, over here, instead of putting dirty clothes in a hamper in the closet, my husband built this little thing. So we put clean towels up here, so we don't have to have closet space for it. Dirty towels here, and dirty clothes there. And the scale slips right under there. The basket that's up here, it has um, all of our cords and it keeps their electronics for charging overnight. So um, that keeps them kind of out of the way. And then coming in here, very exciting, it's our toilet room. Uh, but what I did want to point out is that we have this blank space up here. And so by putting a cabinet up here, we were able to maximize storage space by using that blank wall that nobody's gonna be using. So that was helpful. Uh, over here, this is our bathroom closet. And it doesn't have any of the typical things you'd find in a bathroom closet. Um, but what's in people's closets describes who they are. And uh, once again, we used the boxes with labels as much as possible, kind of like adult Tetris. And then this is the other closet that we are supposed to have clothes in, supposedly. It's now become our COVID-19 home office. <laughs> and um, let's see, there's a bookshelf here with some of the books that we're using. And then Back behind here, you can't really see it, but there's a, a quilt on a rack. And behind that, we've got a little extra storage space there for items that got relocated during the pandemic. Uh, and now we're going to head to the other end of the house and look at some of the other closets and how the kids' rooms are set up so I can explain more about why we did some of these closets the way they, that we did and why it helps us with the executive functioning. Okay. So we're on the other side of the house now, and um, that's the kids' bathroom. We're not going in there because we have a brand new kitty in there. Uh, but we're gonna head into my daughter's room for a minute. So mostly it's just her books, well, our books and toys. So um, we don't have any under the bed storage here, but that's okay. This is her closet. And this is where we house most of the craft supplies, mostly because she loves using the craft supplies. Um, we used boxes once again, all of them are labeled. We've got metal working, there's leather working, jewelry making, woodworking, paper crafts, plastic crafts, yarn, several fabric boxes, a puppet making box. There's lots of different ones. Up at the top, we have the boxes we don't use often. Um, model trains, we tend to get those out in the winter months to enjoy. Um, a few holiday items from different family members, some scrapbooking type stuff. Um, there is also a box of keepsakes. It's the same size as these. And one of the pluses about having all of these boxes is that if you have a leak, odds are your stuff is gonna be pretty well protected. Um, Another thing is if you have a hurricane, you could still end up getting water damage, but if you bagged each box individually and then duct taped it closed, then you probably would be able to most of the time avoid water damage. Um, and then also when you are packing up stuff to evacuate, I can come in here and I can grab the keepsake box and I know that that's the stuff that I really wanted to keep safe um, for my kids. We have her clothes at the bottom. Obviously clothes are not a really big priority in our house. We really don't care. We really like books and crafts and nerdy type stuff. So what you have describes who you are at that moment. It's all good. 
Uh, everyone usually has at least one nice outfit though, and she's got her laundry bag. There's some crafts and toys back in there that she sometimes pulls out, but most of what she uses is out here. We're gonna head to my son's room for a minute. Oh, and I also always organize the boxes by function. So if you notice in the crafts in there, they were all organized by function. And this is my son's room, totally different feel to it. Um, I told you earlier that I don't tend to keep boxes. This is how I store the kids' DVDs and mine too. It's a lot more concise and um, if we evacuate for a hurricane, especially when they were small and they, they were particularly attached to certain videos, like they found them soothing. So if we had to evacuate, we could take all of them with us all at once. Um, under the bed storage in here is particularly useful because this is where my son's drum set set is. Um, which is really nice because we hung quilts on three sides and there's carpet in this room. So it kind of dampens the sound a little bit. Um, and this helps keep some of the dust off. We need to dust again. but um, And then we've got a light so he can make sure he sees well. Oh, and there's also a chest back in here. Um, extra video game supplies are kept there. Things that didn't fit. He does have a TV in his room because this used to be our game room. So that's why all those supplies are in here. This is his closet. So again, we're doing the whole boxes with the labels thing and it's divided by function. Um, cosplaying is kind of important to our family. So we have different cosplay boxes for different things. This one's empty because it's probably going to be another cosplay box. Um, all of our sheets and like mattress covers and stuff like that are in here, mostly because if they're not on our bed, they're being used to build a fort or put Legos on or something other than the typical usage. Um, his clothes are down there and then he's got some drawers and um, little, they're baking pans that we put cars in or little figures. Um, and he's got several boxes of uh, toys over here too. So um, that's kind of how we did the boxes and I kind of find that it's like adult Tetris and it's really helpful because one everybody knows where everything goes which is really important especially if you have someone who um, has challenges processing spatial information. Um, sometimes they really need everything to have a space so they can find their stuff. Um, also, when a box gets too full, then when I see that, I know either it's time to go through the box and clean it out and maybe get rid of something, or I need to think about reorganizing a little bit because it all doesn't fit anymore. So I have to rethink about it. But that way, if I want to clean something out, I don't have to clean out an entire room at once. I just clean out one box. And then last thing we're going to do is we're going to come back out to this hallway to all right so this is the hallway closet this is where we keep supplies uh, we've got one for pool chemicals cleaning supplies there's garden supplies animal supplies household supplies doesn't always make sense to everybody that didn't work out so well home improvement things like paint and stuff like that um so that's pretty much some of the things that we've done um the big thing with helping people with executive functioning organize is to, if you, if you have trouble with spatial skills, get somebody to help you because it can be kind of overwhelming. If you don't have trouble with spatial skills, a lot of times what I like to do is I take everything out of a room and then I put back the things I know where they go and the things that I know we're keeping. And then I sort through the other miscellaneous things after that. Um, and it helps sorting by function, by color, um, those kinds of things, being thoughtful about where you put things and just being thoughtful of what you have, the space you have, the location and your own personality. Four days ago, I shared with you guys how I organize our space to help my executive functioning. So now I want to take a moment to share with you guys the beautiful mess that we have made in the last four days.
for me, organization isn't about keeping the house clean. It's about supporting my executive functioning so that I can enjoy more time with my family, doing things I enjoy without getting stressed out. And that honestly is what I really want more than anything.